Hi everyone, so the markets are doing fairly well as I'm shooting this video on 13th of November 2022. For example, if you consider this chart, what you will see is that the market touched this resistance line almost six times and has finally given a breakout here. So the natural question comes that hey, if we buy index funds here, and I will explain in a minute what index funds are, if you buy index funds here and hold it to approximately 21,500, there are decent gains to be made without taking too much risk. Is that something that you should do? Because a lot of investors are speaking about index fund bubbles. There are two groups that have been formed. On one side of the equation, we have investors such as Mr. Warren Buffett, who says that, you know what, index fund investing is one of the best forms of investing that you could explore. In fact, he has went on to say that people should first buy index and then only consider buying Berkshire Hathaway. I, I recommend the S&P 500 index fund and have for uh, a long, long time to people. And uh, I've never recommended Berkshire to anybody. But on the other side, we have legendary investors like Mr. Peter Lynch, who says that the move to passive investing is actually an incorrect move. And you're robbing yourself from making superior returns. Some investors like Mr. Michael Vare, who keeps on giving negative news, he has went on to say that index investing is actually a bubble which is waiting to be popped. So on this video, I'm going to help you systematically understand in five simple points what index investing investing actually is? Should you be doing index investing? Are we truly in an index bubble? And what would be the best investment style when it comes to index investing? What precisely is it that I am doing? So do watch this video carefully because there is a 20-25% gain to be made which can definitely be made in another year or so. But do watch this video very carefully and also like this video and subscribe to the channel because it would allow these type of videos to reach out to more people. So let us kickstart our conversation and let me start from the absolute basics. I will keep this commentary short. So very quickly helping you refresh the basics. So index fund basically is a type of a mutual fund. In India, we can pick two types of indices. For example, we can pick something called as Nifty 50 and we can also pick Sensex. So these are two index fund options that are available to Indians. So if you consider Nifty 50, then it means that this is the collection of top 50 companies in India by market weight. So this would have companies like TCS, Infosys, Reliance, HDFC, HDFC Bank, etc, etc. So this is the group or universe of companies that we consider to be in this Nifty 50 index basket. So whenever you are going and purchasing a Nifty 50 index fund, what are you purchasing? You are purchasing an entire collection of those top 50 stocks. Now in the US, there are different indices. For example, there is S&P 500, there is NASDAQ. So these are prominent indices in the US. So US investors have an option and they mostly invest their money here. And Indian investors, they mostly invest their index money here. Now there are multiple advantages associated with index fund. You can check some of my previous videos, but just to explain you in under 30 seconds, the first key advantage is the cost advantage or the commissions advantage that index funds have the lowest possible commissions compared to other type of mutual funds. So that is the first key benefit. Second key benefit is that you know where your money is exactly going. For example, if you go and invest in some SBI hybrid fund, you don't know where your money is going to go. But when you are going and investing in UTI, which is a company that runs that index fund, you know exactly where your money is going. There are multiple other advantages and I will not bore you with the detail because that is not what the objective of this video is. But I hope that to beginner audiences, you get the perspective what index investing actually is. Now, over the last few years, index investing has become a very popular form of investing, especially in the US. So just to talk about some data here, you can see from this chart and there are three charts that are right there in front of you. So you would see that the distribution of active versus passive mutual fund investing. Now, what is active versus passive? Passive means index fund investing that people simply go and purchase Nifty 50 or Sensex in India or NASDAQ and S&P 500 in the US. And active investing means that they put their money in equity funds, they put their money in hybrid funds, etc, etc. So the proportion of active investing is going down quite aggressively and the proportion of passive investing is going up. You can check this from the figure that, that back in 2010, 20% 20 of investment that was happening in the mutual fund industry in the US was in passive funds and almost 80% was in active funds. This has gotten completely changed by 2019, where almost 40% of the money started going in passive funds and approximately 60% in active funds. 
and going forward it is projected that by 2025 this number is going to get further skewed so what is the simple one line summary here that the active fund investing industry is somewhat going down and passive fund or index investing industry is going up quite prominently. So this brings us to a natural question that okay fine if that is happening people are moving to low commissions product people are investing their money in index fund Akshat you are investing your money in index fund yes when I buy mutual funds I only buy index funds that's it there is no other mutual fund that I have in my portfolio. So the natural question comes that okay why is this entire move? to passive form of investing aka passive investing bad. So the first key problem in this entire migration to passive form of investing or index investing is that it makes everything very average. For example, it would make good stocks look average and also it will make bad stocks look average. So let me pick the example of Reliance and HDFC Bank to make this case. Now if you study the period for Reliance from approximately 2009 to all the way to 2017-2018, approximately a 10 year period, Reliance gave close to 0% return. There were a host of problems when it came to oil industry, infrastructure industry, etc, etc. And during this entire time, Reliance did not give any return. One could argue that it was a bad stock, but because of the fact that it was a part of Nifty 50, people chose to invest where? People said that, you know what, I'm going to buy Nifty 50 and automatically their money went to a company like Reliance. So it made a bad stock look good. The opposite happened in HDFC Bank's case. For example, again, if you take that same period, HDFC Bank grew almost from 90 rupees all the way to 6, 700 rupees in another 10 years. And it was a fabulous stock. But if you were buying Nifty 50, your money got split between Reliance, HDFC and a bunch of other stocks. So you can read this snippet here and it categorically says that due to this bulk buying, that good companies and bad companies are lumped together and it leads to poor capital allocation by investors. Now the second problem that happens in index investing is the problem of price discovery or discovering the true price of the underlying asset. So let's say that you have 10,000 rupees to invest. You have no intent necessarily to invest in Reliance, but because you feel that index investing is great. So you pick that entire money and invest in Nifty 50. Now what would happen is that a part of that money would go to a company like Reliance. Now even in a situation where you are not necessarily looking to invest in Reliance, some part of it is going to Reliance, automatically what is happening? It is preventing the true discovery of the price of Reliance. Now the third problem with index investing is that it is actually causing a bubble. This has been encapsulated in a slightly more complicated financial jargon language by Mr. Michael Burry. So please pause the video and read it here and I will also present my quick commentary. Now Mr. Michael Burry says that due to the rise of index fund investing, there is no individual security level analysis that happens and as a result price discovery does not take place. And if this bubble is led to fester more, it can create a havoc. Something very similar happened in 2008 during the collateralized debt obligation bubble. I understand that some of you might have been confused with this. So let me break it down and simplify it further. Now in 2008, what happened was that there was something called a CDO or collateralized debt obligations. In very simple words, this is what the circumstances were that people were saying that the entire housing market will not go down. Even you might have noticed and even your parents, grandparents, even I say that, you know what? That house is what or land is what? That it's a preservation of wealth. Generally speaking, the housing prices do not go down. If you are scouting a good property, buying it, then it is very, very unlikely that a property that you might have purchased for 50 lakh rupees, it will come down to 20 lakh rupees. That will very rarely happen. So investors believed in this argument back in 2008 and they said that housing market is never going to come down. So what did they do? They created a financial instrument called a CDO or collateralized debt obligation. What it simply means is that people usually take loans when they buy homes. So all these loans were packaged into an instrument called as collateralized debt obligation. And these loans were sold to investors with the promise that, hey, you know what, if you go and invest in these CDOs, you are guaranteed going to make 10% returns. Why is that? Because the housing market will keep on going up. These people will continue to pay their interest and whatever money we are making, we will pass it on to you in form of higher returns. But more specifically, did all the parts of the housing market collapse? The answer was no. It was not as if that the entire housing sector collapsed and all the houses that were there, they went down in value. There were specific type of houses that were collapsed 
that were purchased by people who could not pay their mortgages. For example, even right now, the property prices in New York are very, very high. But some village in Alabama, there the housing prices would have gotten crushed brutally. So what Mr. Michael Burry is saying is absolutely right, that whenever you are investing in financial instruments, be it the entire housing sector, be it entire stock market, aka Nifty 50, Sensex, etc., you need to go at security level and consider each of these specific types of things. And if you don't do that, that can lead to a bubble and something similar is happening when it comes to index bubble that we are witnessing right now. So I hope that you got the perspective that what precisely is the problem with index investing. It might be also useful for us to understand the perspective from the other side. And here we have a defender called as Mr. Warren Buffett, who has been talking very positively about index investing. One of the examples that he quotes is that if you go to 1989 and take a look at top 20 companies in America, none of those companies exist today. So within a span of three decades, all these companies are gone. Therefore, retail investors are ill-equipped to pick individual stocks. Now, is there merit? Is there not merit? This is up for speculation, but I will help you quickly understand my perspective also. And this has to do with the type of returns that Mr. Warren Buffett has been making in the market for the last two decades. I am no one in front of him. I am not trying to criticize him. I am simply pointing data that is there. So here are the returns that Mr. Warren Buffett has been making over the last two to three decades. And what you would categorically notice is that Mr. Buffett has been unable to make returns in excess of market. So you can see this, that in 2002, market gave approximately negative 18%, Mr. Buffett's portfolio was negative 17%. Then Mr. Buffett gave 24% return, market gave 25%, 19%, 21%. So if you go down this list, you will hardly see any major difference between index returns and Mr. Warren Buffett's portfolio returns. So you can clearly see that over the last two decades, Mr. Warren Buffett has hardly beaten the index and even in his personal portfolio, he holds index funds. Now, before you jump onto the bandwagon that you know what, none of the investors can ever beat the the index. It's just a pointless exercise to even try to beat the index. You need to take a more nuanced look at Mr. Warren Buffett's portfolio and truly understand the reason as to why he is unable to beat the index. So if you open up Mr. Buffett's portfolio, what you will notice is that he has a highly concentrated portfolio. Approximately 40% of his entire portfolio is tied into Apple and he has approximately $160 billion stock worth of Apple. Now, if one day Mr. Buffett decides that you know what? I don't find Apple to be an attractive stock. I want to get out of it. Ask yourself, can he truly get out of it? Can he liquidate this $160 billion of position? Because when Mr. Warren Buffett sells his $160 billion worth of Apple stock, someone needs to buy it, right? So the moment he puts a bulk order of sell of $1 billion of Apple stock, what will happen to his remaining $159 billion of Apple stock? This entire thing will be crushed because in the market, there will be some kind of hava that Mr. Buffett is selling the stock hey, $1 billion block deal has come, this, that, and everyone will start panicking. Some other funds will also start panicking. So to cut the long story short, this entire $159 billion cannot be sold at its existing market rate. What do I mean? I simply mean that let's assume that the stock price of Apple is $100. Mr. Buffett tries to sell his first $1 billion worth of Apple stock. He might be able to do it at $100. But the moment he tries to liquidate his next $25 billion worth of stock, this price would have fallen to 90. And by the time he would try to sell his next 100 billion worth of stocks, this price would go to 70. So he will end up taking massive amount of loss in case he has to liquidate this position. So when it comes to big investors or mega or whale investors like Mr. Warren Buffett, it is theoretically very difficult for them to beat the index. But when it comes to small investors like you and me, at most we will have like one crore, two crore, five crore stock of Apple and no one would care if we are selling or buying. So we can sell our entire position of Apple at $100 and in percentage terms, our portfolio can theoretically or rather should theoretically give more returns or much superior returns to Mr. Warren Buffett. I know that I'm going to take a lot of heat for this, but I'm helping you understand the psychology behind all that move. So investors like Mr. Warren Buffett or big mega investors, they benefit a lot when people get into index investing game. Why? Because these type of companies benefit the most from index investing and Mr. Warren Buffett type of investors also benefit the most when people get into this game. So this brings me to the final stage as to what you should be doing and what is it that I am doing 
worrying about index fund am i buying am i not buying so number one i am buying index funds as of now but will i continue to buy index funds forever the answer is absolutely not i will be liquidating my positions which means that i will be selling off my index funds it is very very important for investors to understand that you should not just buy and forget anything in the market you need to monitor it you need to book profits and then you must learn how to reinvest that profit i agree with mr peter lynch philosophy the most when it comes to index investing which is a horses for courses strategy which simply means that you should buy and sell index funds as per the market dynamics again a parallel example would be that if the indian cricket team is playing in australia then they should play more fast bowlers why because the pitches are different so they have changed their strategy but if the indian cricket team is playing in india then they should probably play more spinners so you need to go as per the market sentiments so what is it that i will be doing in the next few months so this is my plan so the markets have clearly given a breakout here and if you have missed watching my previous video i will link it in the description box i have given the nifty target level of 21500 so this becomes a new channel and i see the nifty trading in this channel something like this so it will go up it is likely to come down it will climb up it is likely to come down it is going to go up it will come down so i am going to trade nifty in this channel so that is my simple game plan what i will be doing i am not a buy and forget nifty type of an investor because it is becoming increasingly clear that a lot of retail money is entering into index funds and going forward super rich people will figure out a way to keep the nifty somewhat sideways and make returns by trading the channel so this is a strategy that you must know and if you know this you will be able to avoid the index fund bubble. So if you like the video, do press the like button and do subscribe to this channel and I will see you soon.